Okay, welcome back. In this short video rather than a stream, as you know, I usually go live, is going to be my take on the backlash that has ensued um, since this Trump rally joke backfiring. And uh, the comedian is called Tony Hinchcliffe. I've actually talked about Tony before, as I'm a fan of Kill Tony, which is a roasting show and comedians, um, stand-ups get roasted. It's very entertaining for people like me who have quite a crude sense of humor, who appreciates the offensive being um, woven into jokes so we can begin to not take ourselves so seriously. But that's for a stand-up stage and a comedy stage. This took part on a political rally stage. So I, I won't be so complimentary and supportive, but I'm going to frame it in a way that I haven't seen anyone frame it before. So you are in for a treat, number one. Number two, um, if you haven't already subscribed, I'm Serena. Um, you have been watching my stuff or you're watching this now and you're curious like who is this person with a Brit accent um I'm from across the pond I'm middle-aged I've been in communications and media for 20 something years not always online have been online more sort of consistently in the last few years um doing various um activities I'm a creative as well. So um, you're here because I do provide uh, political commentary and I'm really big on zooming out on our thinking, the way we look at things, taking in all perspectives and worldviews, improving our media literacy, encouraging others to do the same and being that thing, you know, critical thinker like. So that's why you're here. And that's why you're still watching. So if you haven't already subscribed, please do. I'm not going to do that douchey thing like, I looked at my stats and around 80% of you aren't, <laughs> have really annoys me. Let's now go to the offending clip provided by the Times and the Sunday Times because it's a lovely, neat clip. And then we'll talk a little, you know, because that's fun. That's why you're here. You know, there's a lot going on. Like, I don't know if you guys know this, but there's literally a floating island of garbage in the middle of the ocean right now. Yeah. I think it's called Puerto Rico. Okay. All right. Okay. We're getting there. It's absolutely wild to see. And in Texas, stuff is really, really crazy. We're right there by a wide open border. Where are my proud Latinos at tonight? You guys see what I mean? It's wide open. There's so many of them. It's absolutely incredible. Believe it or not, people, I welcome migrants to the United States of America with open arms. And by open arms, I mean like this. <laughs> it's wild. And these Latinos, they love making babies, too. Just know that. They do. They do. There's no pulling out. They don't do that. They come inside, just like they did to our country. <laughs> Republicans are the party with a good sense of humor. Yeah, but unfortunately, Tony, no one else does. Um, and, you know, so they shouldn't. Why? This is a political campaign and a political rally. I think we're now in this... Uh, I would say very gray zone and maybe it's a transition issue and maybe it's this is how it, things are going to be done now. We have presidential candidates going on podcasts now. That's cool. Makes sense. It's new media. New media has become the mainstream media, if you like. So we've got political um, candidates, sorry, presidential candidates campaigning on these new media platforms. Um, they'll probably be doing TikTok lives at the next election. I'm sure that's going to happen. It'll become quite commonplace. Um, I believe Trump is on TikTok. So you've already got blurred lines, no Robin Thicke reference because I'm not a fan, but you've got blurred lines going on. It's, we're already in this sort of gray area, gray zone. And it's almost like somebody for Trump's rally sort of uh, campaign management needed to say, 
this guy's so funny, he would be excellent at a non-presidential campaign rally where all eyes are on you at Madison Square Gardens. You get me, like you, you get it, right? I'm a fan <laughs> of Tony Hitchinson. I really am. In fact, it is my absolute objective to be at Kill Tony in 2025. I don't know how I'll make it work, but it's got to happen. But somebody needs to say, this is not the place for roasting jokes um, because everything is being scrutinized. Everything you say, everything you endorse, even your facial reactions to things, everything is being scrutinized. So do you really want to open up your rally with this comedian who, by the way, again, very skilled at roasting, goes there. I think the only thing I agreed with Russell Brand on in his, on his breakdown was that the reason why comedy is funny is because it's offensive. Like, that's the juice of the joke. That's what he said. Well, he said it's the juice in the joke. I'm saying it's the juice of the joke. I'm trying to get, take credit from someone else's commentary. But that's the juice of the joke. So I I get that. But I don't think the argument is here is everyone so sensitive. I don't think that's the issue. I think the issue is that um, we've got so many blurred lines and we want to see sort of integrity and, and, and we want to sort of trust our presidential candidate. And, and so they've got to sort of still exude this more sort of royal stature where everything is very polite and already so much uh let's say slack is given um in in presidential or even prime ministerial election campaigns um where they're able to sort of you know deviate a little bit and they use their comedic timing trump does that all the time they do at their rallies etc 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 we already have a lot of that the, the lines are blurring even more with the kind of media that is being used to campaign. At some point, we sort of need to say, all right, listen, it's almost like telling a teacher, listen, I get that you are down with the kids. I get that you speak their language, but could you just not speak about your schooling experience on TikTok because it's a tad in approach. Something along those lines, it's like, I get that we are all multidisciplinary in nature and we can't like ro roboticize ourselves. Um, and I'm definitely one to say that we shouldn't chop ourselves up into little bits. Um, of course, you use your sort of like comedic skills to deliver a message. Of course, you can do all of that. But at a rally, my man, I think, unfortunately, ah, bad call, um, just because... Tony Hitchinson is going to go there and using comedy, let's just say put that in a completely different setting, that joke could then, you could argue, bring attention to an issue, you know, an issue of loads of trash, like ridiculous amounts of trash. I saw a mini documentary about how Puerto Rico is really suffering and struggling with this issue. So sometimes jokes can help us um, shine a light on an issue, an issue that requires attention. But in this case, no one's really paying attention the eyes on the on on this sort of Madison Square Garden. The attention is who's there, how much energy they're bringing in terms of their support for Trump, and then what are they actually saying? With a joke thing like this, people are going to be whoever knows Tony Hitchinson is thinking, "Oh, amazing! He's like come out uh, with support for Trump." Okay, interesting. But now he's making his jokes, and we know what the jokes are going to be. So then it just detracts from it. The way out of this, most definitely, in my opinion, is not to um, pedal it back because you can't now been like more than 24 hours I've reflected on it a little bit because my immediate reaction is yo we need jokes but on a political campaign stage and you know I'm probably leaning more towards the Republican Party currently than I am the conservative sorry the 
Democratic Party. So um, because of the current candidate. <clears throat> So I would say that it's going to require a little bit of intricate communications uh, strategic work um, where there are multiple things that probably need to happen over the coming 12, 24 plus hours to help temper the furore, the, I hate that word because some people say furore, um, the backlash to this um, because all, a lot of those undecided swing voters may have now swung back towards the Harris camp and that's got to be sort of a big red flag. Um, what I'd really hate is for somebody like Tony Hitchinson you know, behind the scenes to be like, oh man, I really messed up. No, you didn't. Actually, you did what you are always relied upon, do, you know, for doing. You you delivered based on the gig you were, you know, you were booked for. Um, but you, you know, whoever curated that stage and that event has made a big mistake and they need to own it. Um, Unfortunately, all you know, a lot of the backlash will be sort of directed at this comedian, um, and I don't think that should be the case. I think if we're going to do a rallies, just try and stick to the politics, even though this was. Um, but like I said, people are just scrutinizing every single little thing. You're so close to the election. Try not to shoot yourself in the foot with this, um, where everyone is just already you know, willing to fire shots. I did have another takeaway. I had another takeaway and I was reflecting on this a lot. And as I say this, I am almost inviting my brain to recall the other takeaway rather than saying, oh, I can't remember. I'll just continue to do this, fill the time because it's there. Of course I can remember. Of course I can recall my other takeaway. And the other takeaway aha, was this. You see, it works. Damn it, it's gone again. No, it's there. The other takeaway was this, Famalam. Um, of course, you want to have comedians and jokes on stage, even at a presidential rally, but don't have a roaster, mate. Don't have someone who's going to roast and do all the inappropriate jokes, right? Don't do the inappropriate. So far, so far the other way. Um, it's just a bad idea really bad idea. So yeah, um, this is going to have to be <laughs> a big L, you know, that means like, you know, a loss for whoever booked him and approved it because, you know, there's always going to be approval and Trump, you approve this. Um, and it's, like I said, I'm a fan of Tony Hitchinson. I'm a fan, Fran. I'm a fan of crude comedy as well. Eh, just didn't, wasn't the best place um, So for it. So I um, would say that there needs to be some pretty intricate com strategic work that needs to be done by the Trump camp, but not by Tony Hitchinson. You're fine, mate. You, you, you did what you were supposed to, offend people with your comedy and your roasting. That's the point of your um, sp specialism and your niche and your thing. Um, and you've got to also be there to represent who you are and your brand. Your brand is Kill Tony. Who booked Kill Tony? <laughs> He's going to kill you in jokes. Are you mad? Um, clearly lost it. That's what I was sort of saying, coming back to my original point. The lines have blurred so much that these calls should not be made. It should have been... <laughs> let's bring it back. Let's open up with somebody else. I mean, there were a lot of people who were at that rally who were speaking. I mean, probably don't want to open up with one of the Trump kids, children, sorry, adults, or Melania Trump, who's obviously having to rely on um, teleprompter. And that's because I think she's just not a public speaker, but she still obviously has a job to do and needs to deliver some words. And, you know, I thought she did just just fine. Um, you probably wanted to start with somebody who wasn't going to offend so much. So of course, open up with a comedian, open up with the Hulk Hogan, like he was doing all of his hurr, and he was doing that to the audience and all of that going on. Um, 
I thought Vivek Ramaswamy was incredibly strong at that rally. What do you think? I feel a little bit uneasy for him. I think he's not getting enough shout outs from Trump in my own opinion. I don't think he is. And I think perhaps he should. He does a lot of work. Um, he does a lot of advocacy for Trump. So yeah, what up with that, Trump? So Trump's camp, you kind of messed up here. It's not on Tony Hitchinson. I like comedy. Don't want to edit it. But come on now, I get the lines are blurred. And I get that we are having to utilize different forms of communications and mediums to deliver the message and to get support. But come on, like getting a roaster a roaster to start um, with this. Yeah, bad call. But that's not on Tony. I'm repeating myself now. And that's because I'm used to doing live streams. And now I've got to cut this short because it's a short opinion video. Um, I'll see you in the next one. I do appreciate your time and attention because that's the most valuable thing that we have. I would love it if you join the channel. You can also support me on Patreon, but do subscribe because I will come back at least every other day as I balance everything. Um, and because, you know, I'm a content creator in it. So I'll see you, see you, right, Michael Caine style in the next one.